Good evening and a very warm welcome to St Giles Church on this evening of Saturday the 21st of November. The Christian Church begins its Holy Day Sunday on the Saturday evening in accordance with biblical precedent. And so the Eucharist I'm celebrating this evening is the Eucharist of the first uh, of the feast day of Christ the King, which is the last Sunday of the Christian year. And it draws the Christian year to a close with the celebration of the glory and the triumph of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King, keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, <coughs> and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and he has made him the head over all, for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Thanks be to God.
Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you, and the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared from the foundations of the earth. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you. Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. Praise be to thee, O Christ. The Palestinian shepherd would pasture both his sheep and his goats on the hills of Palestine throughout the day. Throughout the day, the sheep and the goats would run together. But night time presented something of a problem for the goats. Palestine, like many hot and dry, arid countries, could be hot in the day but it could get very cold at night. And sheep could cope with that, but goats could not keep warm so easily. They easily got cold. So they had to be separated from the sheep and put in pens where they were protected against the wind and against the cold. We must have that image in mind when we listen to the parable of the sheep and the goats told us by our Lord in that Gospel. The shepherd who divides the sheep from the goats is the good shepherd who cares and gives up his life for his flock. It reminds us that at the heart of Christianity is our relationship with Jesus Christ who loves us and cares for us as a good shepherd. Everything else that this thought provoking parable tells us must be heard against the background that the shepherd in the parable is the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. But the other messages are 
Firstly, we are all accountable for our, how we live our lives. And at the end, we must give an account of how we have behaved to the Good Shepherd. When we talk about the next life nowadays, we tend to think of the joys of eternal life, of union with God, and we also think of the presence of those we have loved. We forget that we have been put on this earth in order to learn to love God and to learn to love one another so that then we can be happy with God forever in heaven. And we will be asked at the end, have we learnt to love? Have what we have done in this life prepared us for the life to come? And this parable of the sheep and the goats reminds us that we have a good shepherd who will also be our judge. Secondly, this parable reminds us that our relationship with the good shepherd must show itself in loving sacrificial care for others, in particular the poor and needy. The parable tells us that all help given to another person is help given to Jesus, and all help withheld from another person is help withheld from Jesus. When Francis of Assisi was first beginning to sense God's calling to him, he was riding one day on the hills above Assisi when he saw a leper. Now usually he would have kept far away from the leper, have gone in the opposite direction. But on this occasion he felt called to get off his horse and get to go to the beggar and to present to the leper some coins which he pressed into his hand. And then in an act of Spontaneity, Francis put his arms around the leper and kissed him. And he then rode off. And then he looked around and he could see no one. The leper had vanished. And he realised that in this act of kissing and helping the leper, he had met Jesus Christ. And then thirdly, the parable reminds us that those who have never heard the gospel will not be judged unfairly for what was not their fault. They will be judged by their response to that light that had been given them, and in particular to their, in their response to the brothers and sisters of Jesus, to the poor and the needy. So there is hope for all who do not or cannot believe. If you lived a life of genuine self-forgetfulness and charity, then you will be helping the one in whom you do not believe. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers today, we pray for the Church, the people of God throughout the world. We pray on this feast day of Christ the King, that the Church and the world may sense the glory and wonder of Jesus Christ and of his victory over sin and evil and death and sickness. We pray that Christ triumphant may be sensed by all the world. 
we pray for Libby, our bishop, and the clergy and congregations of our diocese. We pray also for our Queen and for her government. We pray on this feast of Christ the King for the peace of the world when we remember Christ the peace giver. We pray also for those who are sick and unwell. Simone Harper, Adam Link, Matthew Link, Kath Wolfenden and Furno. And we remember the faithful departed, Neil Columbine and Carol Sanderson, and those whose years mind fall at this time, William Wood, Connie Bowler and Andrew Lynham. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God for ever. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation, in your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children, and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him, and he in us. He opened wide his arms of love upon the cross, and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, Taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to the eternal song of heaven. 
holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you. Eat this in remembrance as Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of Christ. Amen. blood of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies, to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. 